Hello everyone, this video is going to be about the new trace feature in Brayware. I have here a graphic of an apple that will show most of the features of the trace feature. So to use the trace feature, first you need to get a graphic or bitmap on your screen by using the insert image button. I won't go into details on how that's done since there are other videos for that. So to use a trace feature, you select the image you're interested in and you choose this trace image button here. After doing that, you'll end up having a screen that looks like this, which basically is another picture of the graphic here and the various features. So we're going to start out with actually doing a running stitch or a fill for the apple itself. So to do the apple itself, we choose the apple by picking a color of the apple. So what we want to do is we want to trace out the red portion of the apple first. So we click the apple, and you can see down here, this black and white image shows you where it's going to find the edges. Now we can see the stem here and part of the leaf is not where we want. So we take the edge threshold slider and we move it until we just have the apple portion we want. Once we have that now, we're going to be able to trace this outside. So once the color is picked and we've picked the edge threshold, we go and we choose the trace feature and we click on the edge on the graphic. And if we did it successfully, you'll notice that there's a blue line here around the apple. Now this point here is the start and stop point. So if we want actually the start and stop point to be somewhere else, which in this case I want, let's say, to have it into where the stem is of the apple, I'm going to choose this next radio button and choose the start and stop there. Essentially, we're done with what we need for the fill. So do the fill, we just simply say create graphic, and it creates a graphic um, representing the apple fill. You can see now in the other screen, we close the screen, we actually have a fill for the apple. Now when I first show you that first example, I didn't pay any attention to the endpoint frequency in the trace dialog, and you can see that there's tons of endpoints. Now if you look at the dialog again, um, you will see that the trace frequency was set to 5. And what the trace frequency means is it's every five pixels it'll put down an endpoint. Now, depending on your graphic, you might not have a lot of pixels or you might want to use that sort of frequency. But we have a fairly uh, high density graphic here, so we're going to probably want to use something less. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and choose the adjusting my threshold here. Um, we're going to choose an endpoint frequency that's less. So I'm going to go ahead and select things like I did before. Start point. Select it there. Okay. So now you notice here there are quite a few pixels. Every five pixels I put an endpoint down. And that's just too many. So if we scale out using the little scale dialog, you can see that when we press preview, it shows in pink. It's kind of hard to see with an apple because it's already pink, our salmon. Um, you can see how closely it fits the apple. Now, if we change the frequency to a higher number, and we probably can go to something much bigger than five, we can go to something probably like 40. We say preview, and it still fits, although it's a little off here. Maybe we want to go to 35. Press preview. And it fits pretty good. So at this point, we can go ahead and create graphic using that. And you'll notice now the graphic actually has spaces that are much more reasonable. OK, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually do other features in the trace dialog. So we're going to go ahead and go to the trace dialog.
and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the satin column feature. So let's we'll select satin column. And just like when you draw satin columns, you want to define the inside and the outside. So we're going to pick the color that's green. Then we're going to trace the green portion of the apple. And the next thing we want to do is we want to define the start point of the satin, which would be this corner, and then the stop point, which would be up here at the end of the apple. You can hardly see the point, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see my points. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do the stop point. And then the third thing we need to do is we need to do what's called a direction point. Now a direction point basically is the point between the start point and the stop point. If I did a direction point over here, it would go around and use these lines on this side, but I really want to use the lines here. So I'm going to do a direction point there. So the direction point needs to be the segment of the lines you want to use. So we're done with the inside. Now we're going to do the outside. We're going to again trace this image. The reason we trace both differently for the inside and outside is not always the same graphics would be used for both. In this case, we have a leaf, which is a contiguous piece, but we might have something else that's broken apart. So um, we'll choose the start point for the outside of the satin column, and then we'll choose the end point up here at the end of the leaf. And then we'll choose the direction. So in this case, we're going to choose this segment because we want this segment to be part of that. So if you say preview, you'll see what it looks like. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a high enough endpoint frequency to do this. You can see it just doesn't fit the leaf very well. So we're going to want to continue lowering this number till we get a good fit. So I'm going to go probably for 10 or so. And you can see we have a nice fit when we use 10. Once we do that, we say create graphic, and you will notice that now we have actually a satin column for the leaf. So we go into 3D mode, you notice that we have a satin column for the leaf. The next thing I want to show you is another feature, yet another feature in the trace dialog, and it's related to the running stitch and the satin. So satins will just do the outline and running stitch will just do a running stitch. So we could actually put a satin outline around the apple, which we don't really need to do because we already have a, um, we already have a graphic representing the, I'm sorry, I don't have everything on the screen here. Uh, we already have a graphic that does the outline from the fill step we did, but we'll just show you again another uh, feature. So basically we're gonna go ahead and do the outline of the apple as a satin. You can use that for applique if you want or whatever. Um, so we're just going to choose that by actually tracing that. You see we have a very funky trace line there. Don't really like that. I'm going to choose a different color. Choose a dark color here. And I'm going to trace again. All right. Of course, that's not really what I want. You notice, um, based on this graphic, you see all sorts of lines being selected. We didn't want that. We want to get rid of the stem of the apple. We'll do this trace again. And, you know, there's nothing that you can do wrong here. I mean, basically, you can just keep on trying until you get what you want. We're going to do a running stitch. Or we're going to do a satin. We're going to just do preview. You notice, let's see. Looks pretty good. A great graphic. And by doing that, we've actually created a satin line around here, around the apple. So we have a satin line around the apple. All 
Okay, let's talk about some of the more advanced features with the trace dialog. So one of the advanced features I want to show you is some of the additional points that you can define as part of your traced graphic. So we're going to go ahead in here and we're going to go and work on the leaf. So the leaf that we want to work on, we're going to choose the color. We're going to trace it. And we're going to set a start point. Now, if we look at a preview, you can see that everything is kind of rounded around these sharp points here. I have a fairly high endpoint frequency. I didn't want something too terribly high. I just don't want too, too many graphics or too many endpoints in the final graphic. But I want these points to be sharp. So to make them sharp, you set corner endpoints. So I'm going to set these endpoints as corner endpoints. And by so doing, it's going to make those points be endpoints for corners. So when I say preview now, you can see it snaps to those points. Maybe I want a little bit better fit, so I'll go to 30. And then when I go and generate the graphic, you'll see that these endpoints are actually at the points I defined. There's additional endpoints that it did when it fit the curve, but these points are set in these corners. So typically what you want to do when you have points you want things to lock to, we'll add anchors so the stitches will lock to these endpoints. And then when we choose something like a hand stitch, for example, it will end and start at those points. So when you go into 3D mode, you can see that these points end up nicely ending and starting at those points. Okay, the, um, the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is another endpoint thing. Now let's say you don't really want it to choose everything for you. Uh, for Quite frankly, I don't use this feature much, but some of you might find it to be useful. Um, so it does uh, pick points along the curve based on the frequency that you enter. But it's possible that you would want to actually define them yourselves. Um, you have the trace feature help you trace it, but maybe you just want to say, hey, this is where I want to put curve points and endpoints. So we're going to go ahead, just like before, we're going to choose the start point, and then we're going to choose endpoints. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually choose what curve points we want it to use. So we're going to set curve endpoints and we're going to choose, okay, let's say I want a frequency of certain frequency of points like this. Let's say I don't want too many ter too many points, but I want, you know, I don't have to precisely draw the graphic, but I can choose which points along the trace I actually want to be part of the graphic. So if you do that, then basically when we generate the graphic object, you'll notice that it only has those points as part of the graphic, the points that I just defined for the curve points and then the endpoints. Sometimes that might be useful if you just really are trying to get um, something roughly drawn and you want to minimize the amount of points so you can go back and edit them with a lot more ease because there's not too many to edit, you might want to use that feature. Now, the last feature I'd like to discuss of the menu, um, the dialog, is the bridge feature. So here I have a letter T that I'm going to digitize a column sentence for two of them. So the one that I'm going to do um, that needs a bridge is the actual T, top of the T. So we're going to go into the dialog. I'm 
I'm going to start. So we're going to go ahead and pick color. We're going to trace the dialog. And I'm going to go to a lower resolution here, or lower thing. I want to go ahead and do this T as a satin. So I've already traced it. I'm going to set the start and stop point up here. Stop point, and then the direction point. And go ahead and do the bottom. So I'm going to do the outside and trace again. Start point, end point, direction point. Now, when I go preview, you'll notice that it goes ahead and follows the graphic all the way down here. I don't want that. I want to bridge across this gap. So to bridge across the gap, you add what's called bridge points. And we just do the starting bridge point and the ending bridge point. There always needs to be two bridge points to form the bridge. When we say preview, you can see that it bridges across. And when we create the graphic, we'll have the satin, a column satin there already drawn.